Greetings from Delhi Medical Association and eMedi News. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. KK. We have with us Dr. Praveen Bhatia, who is the chairman of Institute of Minimal Access Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, Sir Dangaram Hospital. Thanks to be in our show. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. There was an era of open surgery, then came minimally invasive surgery, and then came in minimally invasive surgery, you have bariatric surgery, and now we are talking about robotic bariatric surgery. Right, right. And, and in, in the year 2013, uh, do you feel that robotic surgery will replace how much percentage of so-called non-robotic surgery? I, I would say that uh, we are not competing with laparoscopic surgery vis-a-vis -vis robotic surgery. Robotic surgery is an extension of laparoscopic surgery and it is one of the format which comes under minimal invasive surgery. And in the areas in which you are not able to access, I always call this as access the inaccessible. So if you are not able to access, for example, prostate, prostate yes. so we were not able to do the laparoscopic radical prostatectomy as good as we would have loved to, that is the reason that ultimately robotic surgery was started. And we are doing the robotic surgery for bariatric patients, for obese patients who are super obese. Super obese means more than 50 BMI, body mass index of more than 50 or even super super BMI maybe 60 or 70. So for those kind of extended surgeries or difficult surgeries or inaccessible areas, robotic surgery is going to stay. What is the learning curve in robotic surgery? Excellent question. What is the learning curve for robotic surgery? As compared to laparoscopic surgery, definitely it is less. Any surgeon who has been doing the open surgery and if he has mastered the anatomy, he knows the anatomy planes, then he can learn the robotic surgery maybe in 50 cases. But if he has gone in and learnt the laparoscopic surgery also, then it can switch over to maybe only 20 cases rather than 50 cases. Uh, I, I, I recall one of my uh, colleague in US and when he was going for a minimally invasive uh, uh, hip surgery for sure. a hip transplant, the question he asked was to the surgeon, how many cases have you done? True. The surgeon that I have done say around 30-35, then he asked the surgeon, then at what stage you will call it as a good surgery, he says 50, and the, my, my colleague doctor said, I'll wait for another 15 cases. Sure. When you finish 50, I'll come back because there's no emergency for that. Is there any guidelines in India that that you have to do so many cases to be appointed as a senior surgeon or it is just like no, uh, commercial what, game? No, not even commercial game. Ultimately, it is it is question of performing. I always uh, sum up no, by no, saying... Is there any guideline? I'm yeah, talking about the number yeah, of cases. Yeah, exactly. So, in, in laparoscopic surgery, for example, if you are doing laparoscopic hernia repair, it is amounting to 75 cases. So, if you have got trained in laparoscopic hernia repair under the proctorship of some senior surgeon and you have seen or observed or assisted 75 cases then at you least, can do it then you can do it. So, so that kind of guidelines, guidelines are guidelines or Exactly. They are the principal guidelines. guidelines from the Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endosurgeons. Similarly, it should be in every surgery. Every surgery. Like Absolutely. Like whether it is gynae surgery exactly. or obstetric exactly. surgery. Exactly. Uh, Praveen, if you would not have been a doctor, what you would have become? Motivational speaker. Motivational speaker. That's good. And in what field? In, in, in motivation. Motivation can be no, no, to no. anyone. I know, I know. In, 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 uh, you would have gone to any field. And no, and healthcare. I, I, in healthcare. Uh, healthcare. Motivational speaker Absolutely. In, 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 in healthcare. healthcare. And, and uh, in, currently, the Delhi police, the medical doctors, the public need some motivation after this gangrene. Sure, sure. What is your message? I, I would say that one has to believe on the soft values. Today, all of us know that we are lacking the soft values and it has to come from within. It should not be given from outside and one has to be honest to oneself. If we are honest to oneself, ourselves, then only we will be seeing the other person as our sister or as our mother rather than having a bad eye. So that kind of honesty has to be from within rather than thinking that the government will do it or police will do it and they will do the policing. No, it is not Do you feel that everybody has to be honest? No, everybody in the city, including the police, the first on contact with the victim 
should be trained in first aid and cardiac first aid. Exactly. The, I, I know of the venture which you are doing of resuscitating the people or training them. It is an excellent idea. It is a first contact that has to be tackled and cry for the help. That kind of help has to be given. And if I am trained, if I am having that kind of training for maybe few hours also, at least I can contribute. And I want to make a difference in one's life, even if it is one life. Even if it is one life. And uh, we thank our uh, uh, guest with us, Dr. Praveen Bhatia, who has clearly said that robotic uh, laparoscopic surgery is now a reality. In situations like prostate or any other situation like a morbid obesity, where it is difficult to reach with a laparoscopic surgery, you can reach with the use of robotic. Let's thank him to thank be in our show. Thank you very much. And that's all for today. We'll come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.